Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is an episode about entrepreneurship. And what I'd like to talk about is the most important responsibility that you will ever have in entrepreneurship. When I got started um, in entrepreneurship, I thought that I was in the urban development sector and that I was going to be doing something in the urban development sector. And you might think that you are in... Uh, you know, web development, or you might think that you're in the personal fitness sector, or you might think you're in investment or whatever. But actually, what I realized, and what you will realize very quickly, is that as soon as you get going in entrepreneurship, you're in the selling business. That's what entrepreneurship is all about. Sales is absolutely crucial. It's something that you have got to master uh, as quickly as possible because um, nothing else matters. If there's no selling, there's no business and you can pack up and go home. And so I wanted to talk about this because certainly when I uh, started in entrepreneurship, selling was the last thing that I thought about or wanted to do. Um, and you may have this experience too, that what I was really interested in was developing the product. And this is, I've seen a lot of people have a similar experience. When you get going, you want to create your awesome new piece of software or whatever it is. Um, and it's fun to do and it's interesting. You're doing something new and it's not stressful because it's also entirely under your control. But actually, it's far less important than what you have to get a handle on, which is selling. Entrepreneurship is all about making deals getting agreements, convincing people of benefits if they do something. And that something might be buy your product or it might be come and work for you or it might be uh, go into a partnering agreement with you. Uh, any of these things are all based on, on the skills of selling. So this is really uh, an absolutely key thing to uh, success in entrepreneurship. And I experienced three real barriers to selling, which I think um, you might experience too. So in this podcast, I'd like to talk about overcoming those, those barriers to selling. The first barrier to selling that occurs to me is the massive cultural bias against selling. There's a huge amount of negative propaganda around us about what selling is and I'd like to talk about, you know, why that is propaganda and what selling really is and uh, a different perspective on this activity that is going to be so important to you. The second barrier is that I experience is really just ignorance. I mean, uh, when I started, I didn't know anything about selling. And I think there is a huge amount of ignorance of, of what selling is. And there's a lot of knowledge about out there about uh, the sales process and about how to do selling more effectively. So I'd like to talk about overcoming ignorance as well. And the third barrier, which is probably the most important one, is the psychological barrier that uh, I think we all face when getting into selling, and that is the fear of rejection. Um, because you know, everyone knows that that is something that they're going to have to deal with um, when trying to sell. And there are lots of really good ways of overcoming that fear and and addressing that barrier to, to selling. So first of all, um, I'd like to talk about the cultural bias against selling. Certainly, I experienced that um, in school, uh, I was taught nothing about selling whatsoever. Um, and I think the, you know one of the key reasons for that and key things to bear in mind is that teachers um, in compulsory education systems are completely insulated from any need to sell. And consequently, um, teachers are generally very ignorant of what selling is and tend to be, because, of, because they are protected from the need to sell, they tend to be uh, very prejudiced um, against selling itself. And that certainly comes across in the way that we are not taught anything about selling but we are given negative cultural messages about selling. That certainly um, went spilled over into university for me. Again, professors in university are completely insulated from the need to sell. 
Um, they're protected from the free market uh, by tenured positions, and consequently, they are both ignorant of selling, but they also, in my experience, have a lot of moral justifications for being insulated from the free market, which involve slandering the sales process and uh, creating a whole bunch of prejudicial views of what selling is. And the main prejudices that I encounter about what selling is, is that selling is all about bullying and manipulation. And that is you know, seen in the suspicion and disdain for salespeople that you see in the media. I mean, this, these views sort of filter out into film and television and so forth. I mean, I was thinking about what kind of images of salespeople do I remember from movies? I guess the most striking images of salespeople that I remember is the movie Glenn Clary, Glenn Ross, which is a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, I uh, highly recommend it. The acting is amazing. However, the view of sales that it presents is so awful. I mean, you would if you didn't really know much about sales and you saw that movie, it'd be the last thing you'd ever want to do. They're just horrible people um, who are selling, who are just trying to rip people off, um, selling rubbish um, with manipulation and bullying. And, you know, that's the kind of uh, cultural background that I grew up in that you probably have grown up in as well. But I'd like to suggest an alternative view, which is that salespeople are heroes. They're not just, you know, neutral, but I would like to suggest thinking about salespeople as heroes. Why do I say that? Well, firstly, sales is actually a highly, highly principled thing to do. What I mean by that is that selling is all based on voluntary interaction. The thing that distinguishes selling is that the customer does not have to purchase anything. You don't have to buy something from a salesperson. A salesperson has to convince you of the benefits. And that is a voluntary interaction. And that's a highly principled thing, because if you think about it, the really unprincipled thing is to force somebody to do something. So taxes, for example, you do not have any choice about paying. And if you don't pay, you will be forced to using physical force. You'll either be, you'll be sent lots of letters and eventually you'll be put in prison. So you will have your money taken from you by force uh, in, in taxes. Whereas selling, you only give your money away if you want to. If you think about conscription in wars, if a war comes, you might be forced to go off and potentially get killed or be forced to murder somebody else in war which is kind of a form of slavery. Conscription is kind of a form of slavery. So taxes and conscription are outrageously involuntary and unprincipled things. Selling, on the other hand, is only voluntary. As Walter Block puts it, it's a capitalist act between two consenting adults. And like any consensual act, uh, there's nothing wrong with it if both people agree. And in selling, they always do. The second thing about selling is that it is incredibly helpful and progressive. What salespeople do is help other people to get connected with benefits. And in any voluntary interaction, where a sale takes place, both sides are better off. Otherwise, it wouldn't take place. Otherwise, the two people would not agree to, to do the sales. So in other words, if somebody parts with their money, it's because whatever the benefits are that they are receiving in return for their money, they value those benefits more highly than the money they give away. So they are, by definition, better off for having made the sale. So consequently, selling itself is what actually makes the whole market system work. And the market system is what gives us the division of labor and the great diversity of economic activity which gives us all of these material benefits that we've come to enjoy and brought so many millions of people out of poverty in the last few hundred years. That's all based on selling. And so selling you know, is a, an incredibly um, principled thing and it's also a highly progressive and helpful thing. Now it is true that there are manipulative tactics that can be used in selling. And in fact, I've read lots of um, sales books which include 
various techniques that are about psychological manipulation to try and close a deal. But that is not inherent in selling. And just as an example, there are many dating advice books out there which include psychological manipulation. But that doesn't make dating manipulative. You know, there's nothing wrong with two people going on a date. And just because there are some people out there who would like to use psychological manipulation techniques to try and get dates, that doesn't make dating itself all about manipulation. And so I think the same thing applies to selling, that it has been slandered um, uh, in a very unfair way. And as an entrepreneur, you know, you will face that kind of cultural bias and prejudice against selling. But I hope that this uh, you know, gives you a perspective to look at what will be your most important responsibility and to at least identify that cultural bias for the propaganda that it is. So the next barrier that, that I had to overcome, which I think you probably will face too, is just ignorance about selling. I, I didn't really have much of a picture of what the sales responsibility within entrepreneurship would be. I guess I imagined, you know, phoning people up and getting turned down on sales again and again. And that is, you know, that's a very crude and partial and in fact, very ineffective kind of selling. Because selling is something that you can really break down and understand in a series of stages. There's a lot of knowledge about those stages. And there's a lot of tools and approaches out there to help you effectively master selling. And I would really encourage you to just read everything that you can about selling. I personally found a book called How to Master the Art of Selling by Tom Hopkins to be really useful. But I also read lots of other things, including various things about referral marketing and, and selling, other ones that I can't remember the titles of. I highly recommend you to read as much as you can on selling and find whatever works for you. But just as a sort of introduction, from my very limited view of what selling is, I, I came to approach selling in a quite a systematic way and break it down into a whole series of stages and activities that I could do various things to help improve uh, the sales process. So for example, the first thing that's really important in selling is prospecting, which is actually finding people who you can sell to. And this is something where cold calling, for example, is highly ineffective as a, as a tool for prospecting. There's lots of other techniques that you can learn about and find out about, which are far, far more effective. The two that worked most um, well for me are partnering, which is where you identify other people who are involved in selling to your potential customers a different complementary product where you can link up together and provide you know a joint offering which is even better or you can potentially uh, piggyback on their sales process by adding on to something that they're already selling that's really effective and much easier the second thing that really worked for me is referrals where you get your existing customer base to give you referrals um, and that is a, a very very important um, of selling. The key thing about prospecting, like many of these things, is, is a numbers game. And it really depends on how many people you come into contact with. Um, and these are the kinds of things that you can track and get better at. The second part of selling is making contact. And this, again, is something that you might not actually have thought about very deeply. But when you get into reading about selling, learning about it, and taking it really seriously, you can really think carefully about how you're going to make contact with sales prospects, what the opportunities for contact are and how you're going to approach it. I had lots of strategies when I was involved in entrepreneurship, looking at um, uh, industry events and other kinds of meetups and ways to approach through other people and, and so forth. And you will develop your own approaches to these things when you, when you actually sort of take it seriously as an activity that you need to think about. The third part of selling is what's called qualifying, which is where you take a sales prospect, someone that you might sell to, and you actually identify whether or not this is the right person to sell to and who within an organization is the right person. And you actually look at things like, you know, are they the decision maker who will be able to actually make a purchase? 
Do they have a budget for this? Is this something that they will actually benefit from and so forth? So this is where, you know, rather than a kind of scattergun approach of cold calling, sales is, is really a lot about identifying who the right people are to talk to and what benefits you can give them. The fourth part of selling is presentation, where you actually present what it is that you're selling to a, a potential customer. And again, this obviously differs from, from industry to industry and product to product. But the thing that I really had to learn about was that presenting sales is all about presenting the benefits to a person. So when you start a business, you think about the features of your product. But actually, nobody cares about your product. What they care about is what benefit it gives them. And that's something that you can really learn to identify what benefit it is that you are selling. Again, you'll find lots of information about this if you sort of look into to selling. The fifth stage of selling is handling objections. And this, again, this was a big surprise to me because you think you're making a sale and then people come back at you with objections and they say it's too expensive or I don't have a budget for this and these kinds of things and what's interesting is that you can actually identify these objections and think about how to help people overcome them so for example if you have an objection which is it's too expensive one thing that is really important in selling is to provide a value proposition and this is quite a difficult thing to do but if you can identify that your product will save x amount of money over y period of time then you can help a potential customer to to see that actually what may appear to be too expensive is actually going to save them a significant amount of money within a realizable time frame and consequently, you know, it isn't too expensive for them. In fact, the value proposition shows that, that this is something that is going to save them money, but they may not understand that and they may not know that. And so you have to be really on top of the maths and be able to help them with that by identifying, for example, how much of a time saving this will get, provide and therefore what that means in terms of money saved and so forth. And it's not easy. It's actually very, I found it very, very difficult to do. But it is an enormously helpful thing to do for clients because then it really helps them see the benefits. The sixth stage of selling is closing, is getting a commitment from a potential uh, customer or client. And again, there's a huge amount that you can learn about this in terms of negotiation techniques and so forth. And I probably will do a podcast in future about that. But the point I want to make is that this is not something that you have to be ignorant of. It's something that you can learn a huge amount about to help you in this process. And the seventh stage I've already mentioned is referrals, is getting additional customers from the customers that you're selling to, which is an absolutely key part of, of growing your business. So those are just some examples of some of the things that you can learn about in terms of how to actually do selling more effectively. And when you get into it, you will learn a huge amount um, and it will become much less of a sort of confusing and stressful activity and much more something that you can really measure your progress on. And that is an absolutely key thing to do. You've got to measure everything that you do very carefully in terms of selling and see what is working and what is not. Count everything and measure everything. The third barrier that I talked about is really the psychological barrier, which is about the fear of rejection in selling. I didn't really think about this so much as I just preferred to spend time on other things. And although it does seem like selling is going to be a painful process of getting rejected, actually, when you start to get a handle on selling, what you realize is that it's just a numbers game. And consequently, yes, you will try and make sales and a number of people will say no thanks or variations of that. However, as long as you go through the process of prospecting, of qualifying your leads, of making good presentations, of handling objections, then it's just a numbers game. You can, get, you can get better and better at improving your ratio to the number of potential projects that you initially start to try and sell on 
to the ones that you actually do convert into sales. And when you realize that, it isn't the rejection itself isn't actually that significant at all because you realize that it doesn't matter if a customer doesn't buy. That's just part of the process and there will be other customers that will do. And I think the most important thing to remember is that you're not going to be cold calling. I mean, cold calling is one of the most ineffective sales techniques that there is. It's generally done by people who work for big corporations selling direct to consumers. And if you're starting a business, you're not likely just to be calling random people. You're going to be qualifying your sales prospects. You're going to be identifying the right people to talk to. And selling is going to be much, much more based on building relationships. The majority of sales for most people, and this was certainly true in my business, come very quickly from your existing customer base because you get repeat business from people that you've already sold to and you get referrals from them and you have partnering relationships that keep bringing in repeat revenue. So most of the time, selling is about looking after relationships. It's not about cold calling. And consequently, the psychological fear that you may have about selling is probably not even appropriate to what you'll end up doing. So I really encourage you to um, get into selling. It's not only is it super important, but it's also incredibly interesting and rewarding. And there's a huge amount of personal growth involved. I learned a massive amount about myself and about negotiation. And it's one of the things that you, it really is dependent on you, which is scary, but it also means that there's a massive potential for personal growth. And I just want to leave you with a checklist for you to think about this process of three things. If you're starting a business, three questions for you to answer about selling. The first one is, have you started selling yet? This is really important because it's so vital when you start a new business to get to selling as quickly as possible. You probably want to improve your product and develop your marketing materials and do X, Y, and Z. But the truth is, the sooner you sell something to somebody, the sooner you will actually learn whether or not your product is going to work, what the problems are, and everything else. So you've got to start selling as fast as you possibly can. And that's really a key, I think, the lesson that I learned. Get to selling quickly. So number one, have you started selling yet? Number two, do you devote specific time to selling? This is another thing that I had to learn is that you sort of think that you'll do selling when, as and when it occurs to you, but it's such an important activity that you have to devote significant chunks of your time to selling. I did it as devoting every Tuesday to new leads. I would just sell all day every Tuesday. That's happened to be what worked for me. And then I would obviously follow up, respond to emails and, and do various other things during the week. But I devoted just an entire day where I was unavailable for any other tasks. I happened to find it was easier for me to just get in the zone and, and do it for a day. But I know that a lot of other people find it really helpful to spend an hour and a half each morning or something like that. So they don't look at emails, they close the door and they're just not available. And what they focus on is selling uh, every morning. That can be another way of doing it. You have to decide for yourself when to devote this time, but I think you have to devote you know, at least an hour a day or a day a week just to selling. And that is an absolutely key thing to, uh, to do, to make sure you're devoting time to it. So that's number two. Are you setting aside specific time for selling? And number three, are you measuring everything to do with your selling activity. So what I mean by this is, if you are sending out proposals, do you have a database of proposals that you've sent out, of client leads? Are you following up um, on with each particular client? Your database is absolutely essential. And there's lots of tools out there. We actually built our own database and we tracked every potential lead from the first contact through to either a failed sale or a completed sale. And we had a huge amount of data related to each of those potential projects, identifying all the things about who the people were involved, how we found out about the lead, 
what we did um, in terms of the sales process. So you have to measure everything and that's an absolutely key part of the process. So I hope that is a useful introduction uh, to some of the issues about um, selling. And I'd love to hear any feedback you have about this and to hear your own experiences uh, about selling and entrepreneurship. So good luck and thank you so much for listening.